Hey everybody, Brian Beeler here alongside Kevin O'Brien at the Storage Review Lab, and we've been working lately with a good friend, good partner of ours, Data On. Now, Data On excels at delivering, uh, well, all sorts of Windows solutions. We've been working with the Azure Stack HCI clusters uh, from Data On, and the one that we just looked at recently is pretty cool, Kevin. They use a combination of S, uh, well, of uh, Optane storage, I almost slipped into SLC, and QLC drives. They paired low-cost QLC, high capacity with Optane. Yeah, so it gives you a ton of capacity and really no hit on performance. Yeah, so that's really been the neat thing about QLC is that it drives down the cost of flash drives, uh, but there's always been this sort of underlying concern about the performance of QLC. And so what Data On has done is that they've paired another Intel technology uh, with the Optane SSDs, and they're sitting four of those 750 gig drives in front of four 15.36 terabyte QLC drives to deliver an amazing amount of capacity oh, yeah. in just those eight bays. That doesn't even count the other, what is it, 24 minus eight? What is it, yeah, so six, get, 16 you bays get some open? insane capacity in that box. Right, and so the cluster we're looking at is, is uh, this little fella here. It's a two node setup, right. and this is what they would use typically for a robo use case, small office use case. And as you can see, with the blinky lights going, you're actually running some workload on this thing, I think. Yeah, right? we kicked off our uh, SQL workload again, so there's some activity on the box. Yeah, and we'll dive into UI and, and look at all of these things. But the, the remarkable thing is, from my standpoint, is not just the cost benefits of QLC, but the performance benefits of the combined hybrid flash solution and the resiliency of, of two node. And we'll get into some of that. We've got some data to share on what we saw from our SQL Server uh, performance. Before we do that though, let's uh, let's bring in Howard, who's the, uh, what are you, the Senior Vice President of uh, Looking Good over there at Data On? Yeah, I got multiple titles. You could call me Mr. Uh, Vice President, I'll be fine for now. <laughs> All right. So I, you, you promised to only give us three slides today, but I, I want you to go ahead and set the tone for what you guys are doing and, and what, uh, what Data On is doing with Azure Stack HCI. Hey, thanks, Brian. Thanks, Kevin, for having us on. And uh, it's a pleasure to be here with uh, talking to the audience. Uh, we've been working together now for uh, uh, over a year, looking at different scenarios, different workloads. But ultimately, it comes back to the journey that Data On has been on for the last eight years with Microsoft. And, and today, it really that journey takes us to the hybrid cloud with Azure Stack ACI. Uh, at Data On, we continue to innovate across not just the the software piece of it, but the hardware piece of it to make sure that as a hybrid cloud computing company, we, we bring the latest innovation to our end user customers. And with the uh, new Azure Stack ACI, you have the ability to really deliver and customize the type of infrastructure you build for specific workload. In this particular case, uh, for our engagement, we're, we're looking at a two-node solution and really leveraging the benefit of Optane and the capacity requirement of QLC from Intel to ensure that we have that performance necessary to run the workload of our customers. So that's our discussion today. But before we dive in, I, I think I'd like to share maybe just two slides and really talking about this journey that we're on uh, with our audience. And, and without going to detail, really, it, it's, it's a continued journey to looking at specific application where we could see that whether or not you're on-premises or in the cloud, the hybrid cloud is really a great direction where many of our customers are going because the continued requirement for consolidation security performance, uh, the requirement for more performances is, is necessary, but ultimately, you know, modernization of your app with the emergence of container and Kubernetes. All these are requirements to continue to force us to innovate within the infrastructure we design. And in this case, is really taking advantage of the latest technology from Intel to deliver that performance-driven solution. The last slide I want to really show really is its ability, not just looking at the hardware itself, but the ability to manage and, and deliver visibility into the hybrid cloud. Uh, Microsoft continued to innovate across multi-cloud environment with the announcement of Azure Arc. But more importantly, how do you make sure these infrastructure that we build, whether or not it is for your primary workload, or in this case with Tuno, is specifically focused on 
workload focus like SQL workload cluster or the robo edge infrastructure? How do you make sure you build these clusters and infrastructure efficiently so our customer can really take advantage of all the capability it delivers? And ability to see the entirety of it in a single environment is what we really believe is a benefit of having a an Azure-driven hybrid cloud environment that data is delivering to our customers. Okay. So we've seen that we've seen a number of clusters from you come through. We've had the um, uh, the one that we're talking about now, which is the combination. We know that you're working on persistent memory clusters. You guys are really taking advantage of all the technology that Intel puts out there. And I should note that you're using Intel chassis, obviously CPUs, but also Intel drives to be able to deliver this uh, nearly fully vertical integrated solution, I, I think at this point, right? That is absolutely correct. You know, uh, we, we pride ourselves to being the vendor that delivered that complete infrastructure solution. So our focus should be on the value add on top of the a quality hardware. So we made a decision very early in this journey that we will pick the best of the breed hardware for our customer. And in that case is Intel. Intel is the server manufacturer of data on solutions. So the server, the chassis, the power supplies, including the, the compute, the SSD storage, all comes from Intel as a, as a technology foundation building block that data on continue drive through. So we are a all Intel hardware, hardware. shop. Okay, great. And so with the two node solution, specifically the one we've got here as we take another little sneak peek at it, it's a good looking little uh, uh, cluster there of two you two node boxes. Uh, one of the things that we did, and I think is important that if we talk about cost at the edge, we talk about performance, and there's certainly enough performance here. Uh, but one of the other things is resiliency and, and Kevin, you ran a number of test scenarios, uh, both, well, failing a node in this to give businesses a feel for what would happen. Because at the edge, you don't always have someone that's going to be there uh, right away to service a, a failed drive or a failed node. So on the performance side, we tested a configuration where we uh, leveraged both uh, four VMs, six VMs, and eight VMs on the uh, uh, two nodes and, and these are SQL Server VMs, right? Yes, yeah, so these are uh, 1500 scale, 15,000 virtual users per VM. And uh, really, the, the initial layout was uh, balanced, so in this case, an even number on uh, each node. And as you can see, we scale from uh, 2.5 to 4 to uh, 6.5 milliseconds. And the fun part, though, is when we uh, failed a node we actually saw roughly the same performance uh, with those eight uh, VMs uh, dropping back to just one node. And so that's always the question, right? And concern is that when you're gonna go with a two node HCI environment, what happens if you lose a drive or lose a node, you need to make sure that your workloads are still up and, and capable. And so what you did is you, you, you failed a node, smashed all the workloads onto one and it kept on crunching, right? Yeah, I mean, that's the important thing since you don't want to have an active-active uh, controller scenario where all of a sudden your one controller drops and you're left with half the performance. Right, and uh, and like we said, because these things happen at the edge, then sometimes it could be a, a day or a week or maybe before someone comes out and services that cluster. Yeah. So knowing that the performance is there is really important, and we've already talked about some of the the cost op optimizations that QLC drives give you in these types of nodes. So Kevin, one of the great things about uh, Azure Stack HCI is, well, first, Windows Admin Center gives you the the high-level visual into the cluster and, and health management and all that sort of thing, and, and that's really easy to use. Uh, but uh, let's bring in Henry Fu here, too, from the Data On team. And Henry, you guys also, in addition to Windows Admin Center, have another tool called Must, M-U-S-T, uh, to help you uh, manage the cluster and provide extra value to your customers. Tell us a little bit about what you guys are doing from the interface and additional tools to, to help out there. Sure. So uh, Data On is one of the first to create an extension for uh, Windows Admin Center. It's basically uh, our extension gives you gives uh, the, you the ability to see what uh, what's happening in your cluster HCI cluster. So um, here I'm showing the summary page on the uptime OS, two nodes, drives, 
uh, and some of the uh, resource data. And then uh, I'm going to skip over the inventory page for now. Um, the, other, the other features we have uh, is the ability to get the drive mapping. So um, it will tell you exactly where your drives are. Um, so this is a, a the, service opportunity. If you have a drive failure, it would be you'd be able to uh, you know, instruct somebody remotely how to handle that. that yeah. That's correct. So you see it, it's lit in green right now on the drive. So if there are any issues, then the color would change. And you can basically tell someone on site to get the drive from this particular bay. Uh, another feature is the alert services. So let me set up the alert services. And basically, it gives you uh, Windows Admin Center itself with the uh, HCI gives you the ability to um, receive the uh, see the alerts in the dashboard. But the the um, the thing that it doesn't show it, it doesn't provide is the ability to send these alerts to you or your team. And so what we've done is uh, tap into the API of the uh, health cluster, um, cluster health, and basically give you the ability to uh, receive those alerts. So here you can see I have two critical alerts for this, for this, for this machine. The edge use case that we're talking about, but also if you are managing, you know, eighty convenience stores or something, to be able to have those alerts go into your central uh, IT. Help desk is probably pretty useful. That's right. So the other feature we have is the call home. So instead of just um, contacting your admins, we have a, a feature where um, besides co contacting your IT organization, then you can have us to monitor your drives and, um, and basically let you know if there are any drive failures so that we can uh, take action on that. And the last thing is the inventory page. And so this is where you can see the uh, inventory of your system and basically just ran the scan and it, it will tell you the Windows version, the builds, the, how, how many updates have, have, have been installed um, for the two nodes, custom one and two, and then are there any actions that you need to take? Um, example is that this node has version 9 for the BIOS and the latest uh, validated version is version 11 at, uh, at data on. So basically that, that tells you that, that there is a newer version. Um, so it goes, goes down the line in terms of the system to the uh, network. So you see that, that there's a difference between the adapter two. One on one node is it's disabled but the other one is enabled, but the link is down. So it's just trying to tell you that there's some differences. And then besides the network, we also have the, the disk drives and checks to make sure that the firmware is, uh, are all the same. Okay. And, and Brian, this is huge, right? Because this is one of the most requested feature from our customer and having the ability to have real-time visibility into your hardware infrastructure on the BIOS firmware driver level is something that you know they, they want to have in, at their fingertips, right? Every time when you call a support team, first thing they do is make sure everything is aligned and balanced. And especially for Azure Stack ACI, you want to make sure your firmware driver are up to date and balanced across the nodes. So Data On just released this about two weeks ago, and we're excited that all the data on customer now has ability to have this inventory page for all their Azure Stack ACI cluster and have the next level of visibility. Well, that's really great. And I think when we think about these, these solutions and management at the edge, anything you can do to make that process easier, make it more seamless, uh, more fluid for either the small business, if it is you know, just a single entity or for the larger organization that has to manage several of these locations, that's, uh, that's pretty fundamental. So, hey, I mean, we really like the solution. We like the performance, one, of the Optane drives front in QLC, which is really cool and probably yeah. 
maybe is you think it's the best way or or close to the best way to I use QLC right now? Yeah, it's close to the best way. I mean, you don't have any of the drawbacks of QLC for your primary uh, workload yeah. position. You're it's all on Optane. Right. So if you still want the performance <laughs> of of this cluster, then the Optane plus QLC works. Now, if you just want capacity and and you've got some cold storage, then QLC drives are probably perfectly fine there. Uh, but what Data On has also done is made sure that the solution is resilient so that when a node fails or a drive fails, that we're still seeing really good performance. And there's not, uh, while you don't want to run in a degraded state forever, you can do it for a little yeah. while until you can get it service you out there. Gets you by. And then the management tools of Windows Admin Center, which is already there native in these uh, Azure Stack HCI clusters, but the additional tools like uh, Data On's must that they continue to develop and uh, and put in there to uh, ease their customers' uh, management for so day two type of operations and and provide additional visibility into the cluster. Uh, so that's that's it. That's the uh, the two node cluster we've been working with. We just wanted to bring Howard and Henry in to share some of that with you and really talk about how this hybrid solution with Optane and QLC SSDs provides a really great combination of performance and capacity, and we still have 16 bays open in these things. So you could really scale even just these two nodes out with these 15 terabyte drives to an impressive uh, data footprint. So for orgs that are concerned about their data footprint growing over time, the little solution that we've got with eight drives is a great starting point. Starting point of, of what, 60 terabytes of QLC per node, which is yeah. pretty sick. And then <laughs> being able to blow that up over time. So there you have it. That's the uh, the two-node cluster. Thanks for tuning in. Bye-bye. Thank you.